how can out-of-station patients take treatments at Saima? How long is the stay process in Cochin if they have to come here? And when one begins IVF, what are the pros and cons that they should uh, seek after? Okay, all, all three are very long answers. Yeah. The, the first part basically is, uh, generally currently what facility that we have is, earlier um, in India we could not do a lot of these online consultation, but thanks to COVID, we have online consultations which are made legal, so we can actually kind of have a discussion, plan your treatment. Now planning your treatment probably we'll have to know their menstrual cycle, so decide on what are the menstrual, uh, how, how the menstrual cycle, depending on the menstrual cycle is how we will plan the treatment. Tentatively, a majority of the people will be able to do the treatment in four to six weeks. Okay. Four to six weeks. Gen this is general. Mm. Uh, you know, if sometimes what happens if you have planned the treatment from there itself, probably you take an injection from there and come on the second or third day of your cycle. We can even do treatment like that. So at that point of time, you have to be here only for, say, a month. So when I say a month, uh, like, say, I, we don't insist or probably... It isn't, first of all, I think everybody should know this is an OPD based treatment. Yeah. You don't really need an admission to do the treatment unless you're from really far away and you're not, you don't have facility to take injections nearby and things like that. You can always stay in the hospital or around the hospital. But otherwise, we don't insist anybody to get admitted to the hospital or yeah. anything. So we generally start with one particular injection, say around the third week of the previous cycle. Then we call them back on the second or third day of yeah. the cycle. And then on that day, we will start injections. On an average, the patient has to take around 10 to 12 days of injections. We'll call them after seven days. The first gap will be after seven days. Then after that, depending on the scan and the blood test, we will decide we call them after two days or three yeah. days. And once the follicle is ready, we give them a trigger. And 36 hours after the trigger, we take the egg out of the body. Now, at this, again, at that point of time, we'll take the husband's sperm. And we have the egg and sperm with us. In the IVF lab, we fuse them, make into a baby grow it for two or three days. Now, if things are okay, we actually transfer these embryos back into the uterus of the female. Once we transfer the embryos, again, there will be another 15 days of supportive medications because this is a completely controlled cycle. We are controlling everything in the body, so the body does not know that it's getting pregnant. So that is the reason that we are even having to have give supportive medications. So we give them supportive medications and it's actually 15 days after the transfer and the supportive medications is when we will know whether she's pregnant, she's pregnant or, or not. Yeah. So that if you want to stay till then, probably it's like say on day two, day three onwards, 15 days your treatment is done, another 15 days your process is done. So it's like actually uh, your results are out. Mm. So it's one month will be the treatment if yes. you look at it till the time that you know the results. And in some certain situations, we call them one week or 10 days before we start the initial process yes. so that we prepare everything so we know that what is going to happen we evaluate and all those things so generally we say four to six weeks is an ideal time for somebody to sure. come and spend here and definitely you don't need daily I means hospital admission you can actually come and go um, something like what i did i actually yes. stayed for a month and a half near to the hospital, hospital. only because the facility was near me yeah, yeah. and um, you know where injections were concerned i could get the proper timing to get myself injected and i thought that was the ideal situation okay. so uh, there was another question uh, like for example if someone is coming for the treatment at saima do you suggest them to stay till their pregnancy or they can travel back to US or UK wherever they are coming from? See, is that something you would recommend? See, we have a lot of patients who come from the UK, US and all, who just come here, finishes of the treatment and goes back. So I wouldn't say that there is a major issue by actually traveling back mm. because a lot of people do that. Yes. And you cannot really uh, make them stay, make here, them yeah. stay and, mm. uh, and make sure that they don't travel. So it's practically not possible. So, but only one only challenges, especially in difficult patients, where we might have to support them with additional injections yes. and see those group of people. What happens with them is that, see, when when they go abroad or when they go to US, see, them to get medical care is very difficult. Yes. So when they go, see, you need to, if there is a problem, if there is bleeding, you have to go to see the doctor, and then the doctor will give you an appointment to see a specialist. Now, seeing the specialist will take another two, three weeks because to get an appointment for yes, the specialist. But in that way, Indian medical system is so easy. You can meet the uh, the super specialist any day. You can walk in and meet a super specialist. Yes. Unlike, Unlike in, how it is. Yes. How, how it is I in understand the UK. because with the NHS, it's the same thing same. as well. It was so, difficult. So, uh, technically, we don't say. But then the, when, the, when it's a difficult case or something like that, we always say that, okay, let's see how the 
pregnancies and then decide as to how we go. Because see, what is unfortunate is that now if things, honestly, if you're not able to give enough support, if you're not able to, and if it fails or it becomes an abortion or something like that happen. See, you have to go through this whole process again. And when you're going through this whole process again, you really don't know whether you're going to get again pregnant. See, that is the biggest challenge. See, it's just not about uh, what you say, just you going through this process and it's like, oh, you get an abortion, okay, let's try again. You really don't know the next time you might not get pregnant again. So that is a big challenge. So that's why I said regular patients, I don't think there is any specific reason that um, they so should stay back. it depends on the patient, how patient, difficult yes. the situation is correct, and correct. their processes. Correct, correct, correct. Then you would suggest whether okay, they can prefer to stay, or uh, perfect uh, to stay. Because probably when things are under control, probably I would say we sometimes little over treat them also for the same reason that <laughs> for the same reason that you really don't want something to happen. Uh, you don't want something to happen and later on say that, okay, I could have done that also. Okay, I learned it now, let's do it the next time. See, what happens, to be very honest, what happens in the UK or the, the thing is that they have set protocols. Yeah. They cannot do a particular treatment unless it is proven that it is good. So, you, they will wait for you to fail so that the next time they can correct it. Yeah. But the problem is the next time we really don't know whether you are going to get pregnant again. Yeah, true. So, yeah. India, fortunately in that way we are having the, the resources to make sure that we give you everything and everything possible to make sure that it carries on. Uh, yes, so sometimes this is probably one particular situation where some little over treatment is better than under treating. Of course. The difficult ones, I am yes. talking about the difficult ones, not the regular patients. Yes, absolutely. Whenever a patient comes to, this is something which I always tell in majority of my talks, Like, I think whenever a patient comes to you for a treatment, I think they should have three basic ideas of when they are doing process. One, um, what is the process? Or why are we doing an IVF or uh, is that the right treatment? Have they decided and how, we, how they are deciding on the treatment and what is the process? Like I was telling you, like you have to come on this day, then come on the second day. So they should have a clear picture as to how the process is going to happen uh, so that they can also be prepared because it's just not about just coming one day. A lot of times what happens is you come on this day, the, the patient will go and come back and next day. say I come on third day. See when the patient is not prepared, it might cause unnecessarily confusions and things like that. So one, they should have a clear idea of how the process that we are doing, going to do is going to happen. Second, very important is we should always talk to them regarding the cost, a tentative cost. Absolutely. We should always tell them this is the tentative cost that is going to come for the procedure, this is the tentative cost that has come for the, the medicines, the blood tests. So overall this is what you should expect while you are doing this treatment and things like that. So a basic idea of the cost. Now little variation can happen, certain people might uh, need a lesser medicines, might need you only give them less that the cost obviously become lesser but when you look at extreme difficult, extreme, uh, cases. difficult cases where you have to give them higher dose of medications that time the cost might become. yes and the third and the most important aspect is to understand the results because when they are doing a treatment they should have a very clear picture as to how much is the results that they should expect for doing the treatment now uh, because that is the most difficult and con uh, difficult part to convince the patient because if you realize the best result in the best patient is not more than 40 to 50 percent. Now as the problems increase, the results will keep coming down. See a normal husband and wife, they try to get pregnant, the best result is around 20 percent normally. So when there is a problem, the results are much lesser. Mm -hmm. So when they try to uh, do some treatment and like say uh, treatments like IUI and things like that, we are trying to reach that 15 to 20 percent, that's all. But with IVF, we are able to double that result, that 15 to 20 percent, we are able to get 40 to 50 percent mm -hmm. with an IVF. Mm -hmm. Now that is in the best group of patients and with the problems like the age, the disease because of which we are doing an IVF for them, all those things, the results will start falling. Mm -hmm. So a patient, if uh, uh, what I believe is a patient goes to any good clinic. Every clinic should be able to give them the same result yes. because it's as simple because ultimately the sperm, egg and the uterus and the patient. So if the same because these are the, the byproducts are the most important aspect mm. and that's the, when I said specifically that it's in a good clinic so I'm assuming that at least majority of the good centers will have a good lab, yes. good facility, good yes. medications, good protocol. So if they're able to see because why I'm saying this a lot of people will call us and I say what is your result of IVF? See, it is not the IVF center's results. 
it is the patient's Individual. results yeah. because a 25 year old female who has slight husband sperm abnormalities that is the only problem her results will be very high at the same time a 25 year old with endometriosis uh, or having multiple surgeries in the youth ovaries the results will be much lower so the results are of that patients it will be very different from the results of the patient before you mm. be different from the patient after you so you cannot say that okay that patient the results are this so my results because i end up seeing a lot of people like this was surprised when i tell them that okay you you should expect say 20% or 25% how disappointed okay. mm. like so they they so disappointed but i think or i believe that they should have a idea as to how much they should expect yes. they should not over expect they should not under expect they should have a clear idea so it will help them to face the failure if it happens yeah. and you know that when i say 50 40 to 50% success rate that means 50 to 60% failure yes so it is easier for them to face it so these three are the most important things that a patient should understand before we go for an ivf treatment i think the mindset when they come for a treatment itself they think it's going to be a success success so okay. so uh, that's what uh, we should be very clear we should always tell them because a lot of people are so I have patients who have come and when I told them that this is a result, they just walked away. They said, what, I don't know, I've seen people who are 45 getting delivered. I said, yes, I'm not saying that you not get pregnant, but I'm, what I'm trying to say is that the results are it, lesser. Yeah. And yeah. I'm just saying the results are lesser. See, look around you. How many of your 45 years or 42 years or 50 years, you're seeing them pregnant compared to somebody who's like 32, 33. Yes. So definitely as your age increases, your success rate will decrease. Yes. And so whenever we are doing a treatment or depending on the problem we should always accept the result and then do the treatment yes um i wanted to ask you another question which i shall just get into that uh, the approximate cost do you usually discuss this with your uh, patients as well do you give them like a approximate yes yes very like i said uh, the second most important thing yes. that we tell our patients is Would the cost. Would you be cost. able to tell my viewers? Yeah, yeah, like yes. what See, generally what we do is like we charge around 95,000 rupees as a hospital charges, which includes all the things that happens in the hospital, lab the embryology, charges. lab charges, you know, all those things. Then in addition to that, approximately around, you know, depending on the patient, uh, the medicines and blood tests, everything will become extra. So it can vary from say 60, 70,000 rupees to one lakh, depending on the severity of the case. So I'm, I would always look at when a patient goes for an IVF, they should expect somewhere between 1.5 to 2 lakhs is the approximate cost of the treatment that they're doing. Now, again, this is again a question that a lot of people ask, like, you say this, like, it, it took us a 4 lakhs yes. to do the treatment, it took us, see, now if you calculate the auto that they came in every time, the sit and went back, if they calculate they had to come and stay in a hotel and you add those charges, a um, lot, lot of times you ended up having to do another procedure in between. For example, there will be a pro his, we might have to do hysteroscopy or some procedures while during the process. Yeah. All those these things additional, are yeah. additional costs. Yes. But if you look at IVF per se, when you're doing it, it is somewhere between 1.5 to 2 lakhs. A normal patient without too much of a problems will will uh, will be able to do a treatment in and say 1.5 lakhs. But then at the same time, a little older patient whom we might require a little higher dose of medications and things like that might it could go a little go more than little, that. Yeah. yeah. So I would say more than two is what uh, you around would, two. And yeah. say if you do an additional procedures, like say if you're doing a hysteroscopy, if you're doing a if you have to do a laparoscopy yeah. in between, if you have to do advanced procedures like MC or like uh, uh, MC is like selecting the sperm under a very high magnification, especially in repeated IVF failures yeah. patients. If you want to do sperm selection technique, some kind of different kind of sperm selection technique. If you want to do all these additional things, probably there can be a basic additional charge that goes in. But basically, it generally is somewhere between 1.5 to 2 lakhs. Okay, great.